Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Markwit and this is the eighth video in the Beginner's Guide to Construct 3. And in this video, we're going to talk about enemies as a follow-up, of course, to the previous video with checkpoints and player death. Now, before I get to that, I really wanted to make a couple of corrections real fast in the last two videos. Um, I said a couple of videos back in as far as layers are concerned, whatever the top layer was when we were talking about UI was the layer that an object would be if you, if you drag something into the scene. That is incorrect. It's actually the layer that is selected. So if I have, say, the game layer selected, I drag coins into the scene, you'll see that it'll be set to game layer. If I then change it to UI and drag said coin again into the scene, it will now be UI layer. So keep that in mind. That is the layer that is selected that is important, not the top or bottom order that matters. So um, that correction I just wanted to throw in. The other correction, not necessarily a correction, but it's something that I just didn't do. Uh, we talked about the fire, right? So when I hit play here and we see the fire from the checkpoint now I have it going straight up I talked about how it looked like maybe it was blowing in the wind because it was the wrong angle real simple fix on the checkpoint fire uh, um, uh, fire there uh, particle system just make sure the angle is set to 270 I guess theoretically you can just type in negative 90 and automatically does it 270 also but either way 270 whoops point two I guess it won't matter if it's point two um, but basically yeah if it's just 270 degrees it will go straight up uh, as opposed to the initial default which is set at zero so uh, just fix that and uh, then the rest of these things down here should be fine Okay, and that's it. So I just want to make sure I got those out of the way. Now, as far as creating the enemy is concerned, simple idea. Let's quickly look at, and you guys saw this in the first video, but I want to show you again. You're going to see that we have an enemy, and this is going to be the patrol enemy that we're going to do. And you see these two red boxes. So now when I hit play, you'll actually see that this enemy walks back and forth. The red boxes are not visible, but they serve as a fence for the enemy to hit a wall right and then turn around so that's basically what we're using those for and so the cool thing about it is you can even see down here this guy's walking just kind of barely in view but he's walking it looks like he's hitting these walls back and forth but if you look closely on him i also have some red walls back and forth there so that's pretty much what we're about to build and how this system works with the patrolling enemy we're going to put him kind of fence him in he hits the walls he turns around he walks the other way so how does all of that work well let's find out over here and let's create that and put that stuff in so i'm actually going to slide over here and we're going to put the patrol guy onto this platform all right so let's create him first so let's double click up here add a sprite and we're going to place him into the scene here let's open up this i'm going to choose if you have the pla super platformer engine the assets enemy patrol guy and the go animation so we'll do number one here first then we can go the rest of them import frames from files and do two to six hit open uh, there you go. So there's the whole animation. Now I already have this stuff figured out once again. So we'll just set the speed to be 10. And we're going to set the loop, obviously, because we want him to move. And you can rename this to whatever you want. We'll just call it run, running, patrol, patrolling. Really doesn't matter. Um, but we'll save run. And then we'll do preview. And there you go. So there he is moving. Now, of course, once again, the speed of how fast he is animated should also be how fast he is moving. And so the great and awesome thing about Construct is that you can basically put on a platform behavior just like we did with the character and it will control enemies in similar ways so if I was to say take him and we'll go to our behaviors and add a in this case platform behavior right and hit add he will act just like the character so if I was to hit play He'll fall to the ground, collide with the ground, and if I hit left and right, he'll move left and right. Now, of course, that's silly. We don't want him to. You'll notice he's actually way faster than me, and that's because he's controlled by the speed here. So we're going to change this to 50. And actually, you know what? I did some playing around. Maybe 40 will look a little better, even though I have the numbers here. It really doesn't matter. 50 and 40 are about the same. They work. But that will change his speed. But the other major thing, of course, is we don't want to control him with our controller. So we're going to go to where it says default controls. We're going to shut that off. So now I can hit play, and you can see me move around right and he doesn't move around. He stays still. Okay, but he still collides with the floor and runs in place. But we need him to do the other things, right? Hit, we'll hit the walls and go back and forth. So let's first start putting some instance variables that are necessary for him to work properly. And we'll start off by adding the patrol instance variable. We're just going to call it control. We're going to leave it number and leave the value default zero. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. The other one is going to be hit points. Now you can call it 
health, you can call it, you know, whatever you want, because that's basically all this is, but I'm going to call it hit points uh, to be consistent with my notes. And then we're going to set the initial value to three. Now, keep in mind that this number is all dependent on how much damage your weapon does. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but my weapon is going to do one damage. So three means three hits and he will die. So it's up to you how you want to do it. If you want your weapon to do 50 damage, then he needs 150 for three hits or so on. So it's up to you how you do that, but just keep that in mind. This, of course, we're not going to bother anything else with the rest of the video, but I just wanted to make sure that the hit points were ready to go so that when we do shooting in the next video, we can actually uh, hit the enemy and destroy the enemy. All right. So now that we've done these two things here, what we need to do is create the fence that I just showed you. So the fence is simple. It is another sprite. So we'll come in here, add a sprite, and uh, I'll just put it right here kind of next to this. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my red and a paint bucket, and, uh, and we're going to make sure that uh, we got a color here. So let's go into red and uh, let's put it somewhere over here and dump that in and there you go it can be any color you want i'm making it red because it stands out a little bit better um but whatever so we'll put that in there it starts off being ginormous here so we can shrink it down right and give it a little bit of a thickness right um so it just looks a little bit like that and of course we don't want the player to see it we'll move it not quite on the checkpoint, but maybe right here. And uh, we want to make sure that the initial visibility, just like the camera, is shut off. So these will serve as fences for the enemy, but then we don't see them when the game runs, because otherwise that kind of break the illusion of the enemy walking back and forth. And, uh, oh, whoops, and two total mistakes here. You see I have Sprite 2, Sprite 3, Sprite, on and on. This one here is from something else and uh, that we're actually going to get to a little bit later, so I'll delete it. But we have Sprite 2 and Sprite 3 here. I didn't, re I didn't name these things, so obviously the enemy needs to be named. I'm going to uh, call him Patrol Enemy. So let's copy that, rename over here, and paste that in. So Patrol Enemy, and then this thing will be Patrol Fence, right? So once again, naming conventions using the same naming so that things are close to the, each other in the alphabetical order list of our object types. So rename, and we will do Patrol Fence, all right? So there we go. We've named them awesome, all right? And uh, that's kind of important, too, because we can't do the next few steps without having some names to these things, and they definitely wouldn't match my notes. So if you're trying to save on events, as we've mentioned, several times right then uh, then just add an event from here you don't need to make a new group but if you want to be organized and you're not saving an events you can right click add a group and call it enemy and put all the stuff underneath it but I'm just gonna do the save event mentality and let's start by doing this so what's basically happening here now that we've created all this content is we're gonna set it so that the uh, the patrol enemy if their patrol is set to zero so that uh, instance variable that we created if it's set to zero what do you want to do well we want to simulate as if someone is pressing the right arrow key and so he'll start moving right and then the other one is we want to set him to be mirrored in that case right because he does start facing looking left the other way right is that if he's set to one what is he going to do well we're going to simulate as if someone's pressing the left arrow key and we're going to make him not mirrored so that's what's going on and then this down here controls whether he is set to either zero or one in the first place so let's go and do this whole entire thing now there is one thing that i quickly forgot to do so let me just step back just a hair the enemy themselves and this is the wrong one let me go over here to um layout all right so the enemy here um and actually, you know what? No, I was totally forgetting that I had fixed this already. I thought I didn't change the max speed, but my bad. Let's just <laughs> move on. All right, so back to the event sheet. Um, so we'll come in here, we'll do add event, and we're going to start creating these events here, right? So first, patrol enemy, right? So we're going to grab the patrol enemy, and we're going to do a equal, right, a compare value. So let's compare, right, in this case, the instance variable. We're going to compare, say, hey, does the instance variable of not hit points but patrol equal zero? Does it? Yes. Okay, so if it does, let's add these actions, right? Patrol enemy will simulate so we'll start talking simulate here simulated control you have a couple of controls to choose from right left right and jump we're going to do in this particular case right okay and hit done so simulate someone's pressing right on the keyboard okay and then we'll have the patrol enemy uh, get mirrored so we'll do patrol enemy and we'll type in set m for set mirrored and we'll just use the default mirror and hit done all right, and now we got to do basically the opposite. So let's add another one where the patrol enemy, right? And we're going to compare uh, values. So compare instance value, uh, variable patrol, set that to be one instead of zero. So if he is one right now, what we're going to want him to do is the opposites of these. So let have the patrol enemy simulate walking a different direction, right? So we'll simulate control, but in this case, left instead of right. So hit done, and then we will do the not mirrored. 
So patrol enemy is now set to be not mirrored. So let's type in set mirrored, okay, and choose not mirrored. There we go. So we did the two opposites. Now, as I said before, let's get those fences doing something to kind of create this effect that we want, okay? So the fence, in this case, we're going to do the patrol enemy on collision with the fence, right? We're going to check to see that if his patrol is set to zero, well, change them to one and then or else. Right. So it's saying if this isn't the case else or otherwise, if he is uh, one, then make him zero. OK, so that's really what's going on here. So let's create that one. And this one involves a sub event, which we haven't done yet. We'll start off with the event itself, which is patrol enemy collides with another object in this case fence. OK, and done. What do we want to happen? Well, now we have to do a sub event. So we're going to right click here and we're going to add and we're going to do a sub event. OK, so not just another event or a extra condition, but a sub event. And this time we're going to have the patrol enemy once again, compare value. So we need to make sure that we're comparing the instance variable here of patrol that is set to zero. Right. And then we're going to add a second one. So I'm going to right click here and we're going to add another sub event. This time it's going to be a system and that's the else one. Right. So it's basically saying if it's not this, well, then do this. OK, so there we go. So we have those two. Now let's add the actions that go with them. So the action is if he's set to zero, right, what do we want to do with enemy? Well, we want to set him to one. So let's type in set variable or set value. And we'll change this from hit points to patrol and set him to be one. And then, of course, not 21, but one. And we're going to make sure that with the else one, we do the quite opposite by going patrol. And then we're going to have him be set. So we'll do set again, set value in this case to zero for patrol. All right. So that should be it. We should have enough now to test and make sure he's doing what we want him to do. Right. And whoops. And actually, did I forget to add the yes, I did. I forget to add a fence on the other side. Silly me. Let's drag in a fence on the other side. As you can see, he will follow physics and fall right off. So let's kind of put the fence right here and try one more time. There you go. Right. So basically, as I said before, all those things, let it so that he can go back and forth. Now, he doesn't hurt the player or anything and we can't hurt him either. It's just there and so on. So we're going to need to uh, update that. But what I want to do now is actually I want to add a particle system that we will use. So just like with the hit points, I'm trying to create some content that we will use in the next video. But this next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a particle system that is going to uh, shoot out when the enemy gets hit by a uh, or even the player. Actually, we'll have it set also when the player gets hit. Um, um, so let's do that, this little kind of hit particle, I call it. So in order to create a particle, once again, double click, come over here, particles. OK, we're going to add the particle kind of up here. doesn't matter where it is. So what we're going to do with the particle, we don't need to worry about the size. We can shrink it way, 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 way down. But so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the line tool and I'm going to change, excuse me, my color to um, to white. And we're going to have a pretty thick line here and we're going to draw. I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to basically make some make a box. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't matter. That's good enough. And that will serve as our particle system. Now, it looks ginormous there, of course, but we're going to shrink this thing down. We're going to use these settings. OK, so on the settings right for this particular particle system is we're going to go to rate of three. OK. And we will do 360 on a spray cone. So basically, it will be shooting in every direction. And uh, we're going to do one shot. I want to leave it continuous spray just for a second, just so you can get a heads up of what it looks like. And then we'll change it to a um, to a one shot. So we'll do 40 on the speed. We'll do 5 on the size. 80 in opacity, because I want it to be a little bit see-through. Um, we'll do 20 on the grow rate, so it actually gets larger over time. right? And uh, then we'll do 10 and 10 in the X and Y randomizers, respectively. And uh, let's see, 20 on the size randomizer. So these are all settings, of course, I fiddled around with before we even got to this point. But under acceleration, I'm going to set that to zero angle randomizer because I do want it to spin a little bit uh, to 2000. And then lastly, we're going to have it fade invisible in a uh, 0.3 seconds. Well, um, yeah, we'll just yeah, we'll change that. So I'll do 0.3 seconds. All right, cool. So let's give that a test. If we move this in, you should be able to see what it looks like. So we'll hit play here. And uh, there we go. So that's what it looks like, right? So you'll kind of see that effect. We can fiddle around with the numbers a little bit more, but when you hit them, they'll just see a couple of you know boxes come out or whatever. It's not meant to be anything super crazy, but that's it. It doesn't look like my angle uh, uh, my angle randomizer is working very well, but uh, whatever. Uh, it works. So we're just going to leave it off screen, right? We don't want it to be on screen. We're going to call it back when we need it, as I said before in the next video, but we just wanted that to be created. All right. 
And then lastly, we need to be able to have the player die from touching the enemy. Now, what we need to do is we're going to do exactly, pretty much exactly, not exact, exact, but pretty close to what happens when the player goes outside the layout. So what we can do here is we can copy this entire thing, right? So we can copy this entire thing because some of these things we're going to want to do again. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste. So now we have that whole set of things. So we don't have to like fiddle around and do all this stuff over again, right? But we're going to make a couple of small changes to how it works. So first of all, now instead of player is outside of layout, we're going to have to change this. We'll, we'll double click and instead of outside of layout, we'll be collision, on collision with another object and we're going to choose the patrol enemy, right? So there you go. So now we've switched and swapped that out. Now the things that we do want to keep is the destroy the player and the camera, right? But we also want to make it so that there is that hit particle. So I guess we are going to use the hit particle in this video. So let's go in and let's have that spawn in. So let's come in and add another action. And we're going to do another system. We're going to create an object and we're going to create the hit. And I haven't renamed it, I don't think yet. So um, it is called, uh, it should just be called particles. There we go. So it's called particles. We'll have it go to um, player X and player Y, right? So basically on the player. So that means when the player runs into them, you'll see the player get this right so let's just start typing in player here so we'll do player and then dot x we can copy that and paste it into player dot y okay so it will spawn on the player okay awesome and we can rename it and it will update in here right so even though it's just this weird, weird object it'll uh, if we rename it over here it should be fine so we'll call it hit all right, there you go. So we've added that, but we need to put it where it needs to go. So it needs to happen before the half a second, right? So it's like that instant. As soon as I get hit, you see it. Then we're going to wait a half a second and so on. Okay, so then we keep the camera, the same thing, right? Create the, create the camera again, create the player again. Awesome. Set the coins, right? The wait seconds and whatever and respawn. So that's pretty much it. It was just those quick things. Add the hit and then collision with the enemy. So now I should be able to come up here, get hit by the enemy, and then die and then respawn. Okay, whoops, <laughs> I left it continuous. I was wondering why that was happening. Remember I said I would go back and fix it. Didn't do that, let's fix it. So instead of continuous, we'll do one shot. And we'll try that again. All right, so now it should just be when I hit him, a little bit of a particle. I mean, we could play around with that and fix it a little bit better, but I kind of like that, right? So we get hit. But we'll also see the same thing, of course, when, um, when the enemy gets hit in the next video. But that's pretty much it. So I covered everything I wanted to talk about in this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one.